Hi, I'm Todd Ferrante, and this is my 3D printer setup. This box is an IKEA SAMLA container. It's big enough to hold three spools on retractable spool holders and can control the humidity inside the box so that I can keep my filaments in there permanently and they'll be dried out by some silica gel packages. The first step in putting a box like this together is printing out the pieces and assembling three retractable spool holders. In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble those spool holders. And in the next video, I'll show you how to install everything into the SAMLA box. These are the parts that you need to 3D print. I'm going to link to those in the description of this video. I picked out a set of hardware from just my, my spare hardware box so that all of this hardware goes together and attaches to the top of this retractor and this collection of steel parts weighs three ounces. We're going to start by taking three of the stock bearings that come with the Prusa MM2 and removing the side shields and cleaning out the grease so that these can be installed with the rest of the parts to make a friction-free spinning spool holder. To remove the side shields from these bearings, I use a sharp awl or a punch. And you take this and you wedge the tip into the crack between the shield and the inner race and you gotta wiggle it until you can get the tip of it under the shield and then you pop it out. So that exposes the inner race and the balls of the bearing. And you do that on both sides, being careful not to let your tool slip and poke you in the finger. And when that's out, you can see that there's a bunch of grease inside. So now I take a zip tie and use the zip tie to scoop out all of this extra grease because that much grease it slows down the free spinning of the bearings I scoop out all of the grease and then I take some WD-40 and squirt it in here I just kind of let this soak with WD-40 in it for a little while and it dissolves away the rest of the grease And here's the last of the three. Now I'm going to return to the first of the bearings and I'm going to fold over my paper towel and then just take the edge of it and use it to try to wipe out some of that extra grease that's inside of here and I'll kind of keep on moving over to, to get to a fresh spot on that fold. And the goal here is to try to get rid of any of that extra extra lumps of grease that were inside and if you've done it right and you've cleaned out everything that you can get to you should be able to take this bearing and just spin it and it will spin nice and free and it'll coast for a long time a bearing that still has the side shields on it and the grease inside it doesn't spin hardly at all it's really necessary to get a low friction stand to remove the side shields and take out all the grease. Okay, now we have three free spinning bearings and we can proceed with the assembly of the stand. Now the first thing we're gonna put together 
is this little gear reduction. And we'll take one of our bearings and slide it onto that gear. And then take this gear. You can see one side has a little lip on it. You want that lip to be facing the bearing. And these three little teeth will engage with the notches that are on the shaft. Those go together like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the other two bearings and put these little end pieces in like that. That's one. There's the other one. And these two are different thicknesses. The, the taller of the two nubs goes into the spindle on the gear side. So this presses in place like this. And then we'll put this other bearing on the other side. Here I have a couple of pieces of wood that are the same thickness so that I can set this bearing down on top of it and press it in there. So now that's nice and flush. Do the same thing on the other side. There we go. And now we take our stand and we take this gear and we press this into the stand like that and we can take this little rack piece and put it in here and just kind of work this there we go so just the weight of this plastic part is enough to make this drop and now we should be able to take our spindle and this will set right on here And if we put that in, yeah. So now we're going to take our rack gear and we're going to add weight to the top by installing all of these pieces of hardware. And when we're done, it's going to look like that. So we're going to start by taking the bolt. This is a four and a half inch long carriage bolt, uh, five sixteenths in diameter. And this is a half inch nut. It happens to slide on here and it goes right over top of that square protrusion on the underside of the head. And then we hold that in place with a 5 16 nut. Then we put on another 5 16 nut. And I'm gonna use this other one that I've already assembled to get the nut position in the right spot. And then we take our rack and put it on. And when you put this rack on, you need to put it on here so that the teeth face away from the head of this bolt. Like that. And then, actually, it will probably work in either direction. I just, I made all of mine match so that, um, so that it looked nice with all three of them lined up. And then you tighten this in place, you put on this nut, and then this one is a 3 8 nut that just slides over. And then you put on the other 5 16 nut like this. And again, these, these pieces of hardware, there's nothing special about them. I just picked them so that they the weight of the assembly adds up to 3 ounces. You could probably do the same thing with another combination of of hardware parts. Uh, the key thing is, is that the bolt that goes through has to be 5 16 because that's the diameter of the inside of the hole that's on the, the, the little loop that's on the top of the counterbalance piece. And the position of this, I have it centered on here so that it's approximately balanced so that um, the, the center of gravity of this piece is is right down the axis of the the gear rack so that it's not trying to bind in either direction and now that that's assembled we can put the whole stand together like that and now the weight of the, the weight on the rack will rewind your filament onto the spool so there is the fully assembled spool. You need to assemble three of these to go into the box. 
And when those are all put together, then you're ready to do the installation. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video.